Um, let's talk about Reagan, and can you make that transition? I mean, because a lot of people started coming from El Salvador to America. Mm -hmm. How did that all start to happen? And did were people happy that Reagan stepped in? Were they frustrated with the foreign invention or, in, or intervention? Because you hear the leftists blame America of like that. This is why Venezuela went down. This is why other countries suffer. What was it like to have America step in in this? Well, they basically fought off the Soviets and. Maybe one of the few times in our history where American intervention actually was a good thing. Um, but no, the, the people needed all the, all the support that they could. Now look, at the end of the day, civil war is dark. So you're gonna have war crimes committed by both sides. Dark things happen, but um, the Salvadoran people needed the support from the US. Like I said, I talked to my dad and he said without Reagan, they, they probably couldn't have won that war. So Reagan played a crucial part. Jimmy Carter was involved. Um, but when Reagan came in, he really stepped up, stepped up to the support. It became the, their, their top issue. Obviously, during the Civil War, you're going to have people flee, and it's going to create a refugee status. So the United States opened their arms. Um, Salvadorans fled to the United States in record numbers. Another country that opened up their arms um, that people don't know about, but you could, you could visit it now, and there's still pockets of Salvadorans there, is Australia. So Australia opened up their arms. Um, so I actually have family members now that live in Australia um, as Salvadorans, which is just an interesting, to me, it's just, it's fascinating. But, um, so you, that's when we started to see the huge wave of, of Salvadorans coming to America, um, settling in communities like Los Angeles, um, an, uh, another a state with a, a strong, a huge uh, Salvadoran population is Virginia. So it started moving in, settling. Um, you had Salvadorans started to settle, like I said, in Los Angeles, MacArthur and Echo Park. The thing, the, the issue is, a lot of young people fled, so you kind of have all these young men with, you know, fleeing this kind of war-torn country, coming to a new country. They have no skills, no education. So when they made their way into the United States, um, the, the other groups that were already settled, like the Mexicans, um, started to basically commit crimes against Salvadorians. So in Los Angeles, this was pretty, it was, uh, it was becoming a huge issue where Salvadorians were getting robbed, homicides, and they were, they were uh, committed by Mexican organized crime. So, so what the Salvadorians did at that time, the, the young men now living in, in the United States, they said, well, we need to form our own group to protect ourselves from the Mexicans. So this is when we saw the birth of MS-13 in the, in the early 90s. And it was formed actually not as a street gang. It was just to, to kind of form a protection against, against Mexicans. The thing is, over the years, they got into obviously drugs, arms dealing, and then they did, they did become a street gang. Yeah, when did they become that protection force? When did that start? Early 90s. So early 90s first became a, came, came a protection force, but then over the years, when the population, the more Salvadorans fleeing, so the gang population rose, they did, then they became a street gang. Like I said, they got involved in drugs, homicides, and things like that. So when they started committing the serious crimes and they would go to jail, the US government would start to deport them. So now you have an issue where you have this war-torn country that's still recovering from a civil war. Then you're, you're now bringing all these 20-year-olds, 30-year-old young men tattooed, you guys seen them you know, with the MS-13 and all that stuff, coming into a country that's ravaged by, by the civil war. And then that's when now you saw the birth of MS-13, what we know it now as the violent street gang. They started then recruiting Salvadorans, and then that's when you saw this the street gang of MS-13, and then that's what actually started the birth of MS-13. Wow, so they started coordinating with the people that were in El Salvador mm -hmm. after getting deported back, and that just really... Yeah, because for people in El Salvador, they're you know coming off a of civil war, a lot of the men, no jobs. So when you had these kind of street gang members come in and say, hey, we're, we're, can't, we're coming from LA, the way we, ma we made money was dealing drugs, violence, and all that, they started recruiting all those young men, and that's when we saw the birth of what we know MS-13 now, which is one of the world's most dangerous gangs. They're active in 47 states. One of the states that's highly concerning is Virginia and Fairfax County. They have a huge, huge population of MS-13 in, in Fairfax County in Virginia. Why is that? I, people get confused of, of all places. To, to, uh, to be honest, Virginia was just one of the states that, that opened their arms to a lot of Salvadoran refugees. It's just they, they settled in low-income low communities, and then that's when we saw the MS-13 kind of settle there. So Fairfax County has a huge problem with that. And like I said, they're active in 47 states. Worldwide right now, they have an estimate of around 100,000 MS-13 members, um, you know, most of them Salvadoran, Honduran, and, and Nicaraguan. Wow, and so what do you think? A lot of people just assume that they're a Mexican gang. They don't really understand the context of everything. And so, so what do you think is important for us to understand between the, the Mexican people and then MS-13? Well, they're both obviously organized crime involved in, you know, drugs, arms trafficking, and things. The, the, the big difference between the two is Obviously, Mexican cartels are violent. We all know that. We, we, we've seen the videos and pictures. But they only get involved if you kind of come in line with what they're doing. What makes the MS-13 um, more brutal and ruthless is that they'll commit 
crimes, heinous crimes, for absolutely like no reason. So one of the big stories wow, really? that came out in El Salvador was in the early 2000s, there was like a bus, a field trip of like 40 kids and MS-13 pulled the bus over, ki um, killed all the kids with machetes for literally no reason. Like there wasn't even a, there, there wasn't anything in line, but that's the type of uh, gang that MS-13 is. They want to instill that fear in the community. Where was this? This was in El Salvador. And, and these crimes, I mean, were, were active. Um, MS-13 was, ba you know, with every single president after the Civil War, was corrupted under MS-13. So um, MS-13, even 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 when their leaders were going to prison in El Salvador, they still had full control. They still had communication. So even the leaders, even from being in a prison, could still call in hits. Um, it's this new president, Nayib Bukele, who came in two years ago, which is the first president in El Salvador history to actually take on MS-13 and take take them on as a as a terrorist organization. Um, so right now, El Salvador is bouncing back. The economy um, is doing really well right now. Nayib Bukele has kind of the views of hey, we don't want Salvadorans fleeing because it's not good for our country. We don't want them going into the United States illegally. Let's, let's have a good economy so Salvadorans stay here. So they've, they've bounced back and we're doing, I mean, El Salvador's just doing much better compared to Nicaragua. So it's, a, it's interesting because if you look back at history saying if Reagan didn't get involved, would El Salvador kind of be under the same rule as the Sanadistas right now in Nicaragua? Yeah, I mean, and that, that growing communist threat that was happening at the time during cold, the Cold War, it could have changed the dynamic. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. Hey guys, it's Morgan. Thanks so much for watching the Freedom Records. Do me a favor, hit like, subscribe, and tap the notification bell so that you get notified when new content comes out. Thanks so much.